So The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, so far has been a lot better than I thought it would be. Last week's episode was really quite good, mostly because of the introduction of a character named Nat, a little person, very, very charming, very interesting backstory, and of course they killed him off that episode, ruining the best thing about that episode in one fell swoop. But overall, like that was a that was a good episode with with uh, you know well written dialogue, interesting story, brought us back to the place where episode one brought us, which was the reunion of uh, Rick and Michonne after all these years. Episode three, we get kind of more of a a glimpse into the CRM and like Michonne, you know, being brought in, trying to be um, a B instead of an A. Like, they could just say alpha and beta. <laughs> The whole A and B thing is kind of silly. Uh, but again, another episode that I, th- I found mostly pretty entertaining. There were some good lines, uh, like when, when Rick uh, calls out Jadis' haircut. That was pretty funny. Uh, I think, again, even you know, even while like I'm impressed by the production value, like the show has gotten so much more money than, than like... Y- I don't know, most of, like, I, I felt this way about Daryl Dixon, too. Like, I, f- I feel like the production values are great. Like, we get some really awesome shots of, like, helicopters flying towards the mountains and, like, overhead shots of, of trees sort of uh, shrouded in, in fog and, and, and just, you know, it all, it, it feels, it feels like AMC is actually spending money on The Walking Dead again, uh, which... We know they've they've always been penny pinchers there, and uh, you can see it in some seasons, especially where uh, where the budget clearly just isn't there for you know to pay to pay all the people that are required to make a show of the of that magnitude. Uh, but but here they're they're clearly spending the money. I think the problem for me, and I you know I wrote my review, and, and it's overall it's, it's very positive, like it's a solid episode. I was entertained, uh, you know, I was entertained by you know, you know Rick trying to get rid of Michonne like she's some some puppy throwing rocks at trying to get her to leave because he can't and he knows that everyone will you know that they'll CRM will come and kill everybody if if he if they escape uh I kind of wish that he would have just told her that but he 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 seems to I don't know it's one of those issues in scripts where it's like the the thing that you're supposed to the obvious thing to tell the person in, in that moment you just avoid telling them that and you say random things like everything we have is broken rather than like if we leave dude they're gonna kill everybody including uh, Judith and um, you know everybody we love that would be the the natural conversation to have and uh, they don't have it because this is The Walking Dead but overall oh and there was some silly voice voiceover stuff but still overall it was it was a pretty entertaining episode. Um, I think, I think again, I, it goes back to the, the premise that bugs me. Like my, my biggest problem with Daryl Dixon wasn't Laurent. Laurent, this is my new Messiah Laurent. My French accent is so terrible. Uh, my biggest problem was just the premise, this idea that Daryl would be in France, that they would take a ship, a, a, a freighter ship all the way from, from France to the Americas to just get zombies and bring them back and like and like some prisoners like I don't see that happening you know I just don't I don't think that the apocalypse that they have created for us involves oceanic travel on that scale and so it's just a weird premise and it kind of it kind of disrupts my enjoyment of the rest of the show because it's like even though it's you know there's some beautiful shots of France and 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 these people in costumes that belong in a different decade, and 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 uh, you know Daryl's a, a character that I enjoyed. There was one, one episode in particular where I thought he was just, you know, he says his little prayer and stuff, and it was very it was it was great. And the same thing is sort of true here, where like I I like uh, some of the emotional beats that they're hitting, and I like uh, you know some of the action stuff, and I, but I don't like the CRM as as a concept as a premise. I find it kind of absurd. Uh, I don't think enough time has passed for an organization like this to have been established, for one thing. I think these big, huge, post-apocalyptic uh, communities are kind of silly and boring. And, and, and they sort of stretch your ability to suspend disbelief. Like, I like Mad Max. <laughs> I like the fact that in, uh, you know, Mad, Mad Max, uh, you know, 2 and 3... 
you've got these these warring like war like warlords you know out on their cars and they're, they're fighting over oil uh you've got you know in thunderdome there's 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 this you know a, a relatively small community that's that's been established with the you know the, the the arena fighting and all that it's not huge it's not a huge you know helicopters flying around high-tech weaponry that they've developed somehow it feels like a post-apocalyptic like 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 a post-apocalyptic society should feel like obviously with the cartoonishness and 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 zaniness of the mad max universe which which you know that, that's fine we don't want that necessarily in The Walking Dead. But I want The Walking Dead to create like a post-apocalyptic reality that feels plausible. And I'm hopeful that the next episode, because at the end of this one, Michonne like grabs Rick and they, they go full Travis out of the helicopter. Um, Travis Supreme. Uh, and I don't know why they were flying that helicopter in that storm. That was probably a bad idea. They probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, lest they Buddy Holly Big Bopper Ricky Valens themselves, uh, but anyways, they we don't know what happens, but but we know what's going to happen is that Rick and Michonne will now be in the middle of nowhere on the road on their own trying to survive, and that's again that's where I find the best of The Walking Dead. Back in the day when they would go to when they would find a new town and they would have to go into a gas station and they'd have to clear the rooms and. You know, they never knew, like, who, you know, you'd meet somebody on the road. Are they going to be, you know, friendlies? Are they going to be bad? Uh, every time the show has faltered is because it's languished too long on some community or another, whether that's uh, Alexandria. I mean, honestly, Woodbury was just about, just about the best of them. Uh, but now with, you know, with the Commonwealth, the CRM, with all these different, it's just... Same thing in the Fear of the Walking Dead. Always these communities, you know. Um, although that show is so so far beyond anything else, I think in terms of just sheer audacity and ludicrous plotting and whatever. It's a, Fear of the Walking Dead has its own special place in in television, not just the Walking Dead, but in television as one of the stupidest shows I've ever seen. But I really just think that the premise here is what's you know I don't. I don't love it. I think they're doing a pretty good job with it. But I feel like there's 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 just something about the whole setup that doesn't work. And I think that... The, I'm just going to tie this back into another thing that I've been thinking is that I really wish that Dead City, Daryl Dixon, Ones Who Live, all of these spinoffs had just been the next season or two of The Walking Dead proper. Instead of ending it on The Commonwealth, another season where, you know... Everybody kind of splits up and does their own thing. Maybe they can all come back together in the end, and or like some of them do. I still think a lot, a lot of them should not survive because it's more interesting when characters in a zombie apocalypse die from time to time. And we we know there's certain characters now that have so much plot armor that's just never going to happen. But uh, but yeah, I think it should have been season twelve. Like you know, uh, somehow we get you know maybe it wouldn't be exactly the same. Again, I don't think Daryl should have gone to France, but maybe Daryl could have gone off looking for Judith because she went off looking for Michonne and now he's like on some adventure with him and Judith. That would have been way better than Daryl and Laurent. And they could have still met some chick, the same, some French chick, Isabella or Is Isabella, whatever her name is. Um, Dead City, you know, that could have been set up again with Negan and Maggie. Somehow they could have set that up, but had it be part of one show rather than all these spin-off shows all tied together, all working towards a common ending. And um, I don't know. I don't know. So it's fine. I'm enjoying it. I'm glad that it's not terrible. And I guess that's the, probably the, the best thing I can say about The Ones Who Lived. It's not terrible. And there's even been some moments I really enjoyed. Uh, and we'll, we'll see where it goes. Uh, for now, cautious optimism rules the day. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Peace.